holds every victory. One voice that silences the enemy. One king who reigns for all eternity. Jesus, Jesus. On the battlefield, your power. Yo 
This month, uh, there's a theme that has obviously uh, been prayed about and been chosen. It's, uh, f- it's talking about from faith to faith. Okay? It's just learning how to overcome life's struggles. It's from faith to faith. We all know, all of us, okay, that are uh, in the service and, and those that are not here today, we all know that in life, we have to deal with matters, correct? And struggles or even sometimes challenges that each and every one of us face at some point of our lives. Now, we have days, obviously, that we, we, we uh, receive uh, joy and we receive blessing. Or when you receive a blessing or, or a, a pay rise or an increment or a promotion, you celebrate. Then there are other days that you uh, encounter life's struggles. So this month for July, we're talking about increasing we're talking about going from faith to faith that means it's actually a a step above all right the bible also talks about from glory to glory strength to strength okay line upon line precept upon precept when you draw a line like that and line upon line you're drawing another line on top that shows you that you are making progress. Step after step, just like somebody climbing up the stairs, reaching a certain place or reaching a certain height, you've got to go step upon step upon step and upon step. And one of the things that will really help you and I to learn how to overcome some of the struggles is our faith. Our faith in God and our faith to believe, our faith that sometimes God will have to use us to do some shifting. That means the shifting of our focus, shifting from what we are looking at or the, or the challenges or whatever it may be that lies in front of us, that we have to shift and begin to look at things from God's perspective. A scripture that is in 1 John 5, 4 says, For everyone born of God overcomes the world. Wow, that's a powerful thing. For everyone born of God overcomes the world. That is a statement in itself. That we are born to be what? Overcomers. We are born not to just succumb to the, to the, uh, uh, you know, the, the disaster or the, the adversity that we all encounter, but we are born to overcome the world that we live in. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, even our, everybody says, faith. So how do you overcome the world? How do you overcome the challenges and the struggles that each and every one of us face day to day? It is our faith. Our faith in who God is. Our faith in the one that has chosen us to bear fruit the one who has a design for us to learn to go from glory to glory, step upon step, a little here and a little there. Now today, besides this really uh, preaching the Word of God to you, I-, I want to bring a bit of teaching, okay? So that you would understand some of the things and some of the points, some, some of the, uh, the ways that God wants us to overcome. There's a saying by St. Augustine. He says, faith is the belief what you do not see and the reward of this faith is to see what you believe. Isn't it incredible? So the faith is to believe what you do not see. Just as Scripture says in Hebrews, okay? For faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence not seen yet, okay? So, but the reward of this faith, like growing from faith to faith, is why? That we would begin to see what we believe. That we will see the fruit and the realization 
Today, you know, it's interesting, like some of you heard me say this last week, uh, and I was saying that uh, I met this lady at the car wash that I go to, which is very close to my house. And today, I went there to wash my car, and he was, she was there again, and she works every weekend, Saturday and Sunday. So I saw her, and uh, remember what I said last week? She asked me, how you are? How are you doing? I said, praise God. I said, I'm flourishing. Hallelujah. I'm flourishing. So I'm just thanking the Lord. And today was interesting. When I began to talk to her, she came in and said hi to me after I finished washing the car, just about to leave. She came. So I put my windows down. I had a chat with her. And we were talking about the situation of the world. And suddenly she said something. She said, she said this, she said, Our Lord Jesus. She said, Our Lord Jesus. And I said, Oh, I said, Are you a Christian? She said to me, She said, Oh, I used to go to church, but I don't anymore. Then she said to me, But my heart still believes. Wow, that was interesting. Okay. Then she said to me, She said, you sounded like a Christian. <laughs> and I said, I am. I said, you know, I said, I believe in Jesus. She said, that's wonderful. All right. So our conversation just began to take off from there. And I said to her, you know, I said, you know what? The Lord wants to bless you. He wants you to succeed in everything that you do. You know, then she begins to tell me how, she's, how much she's paid working there. It's like as if she's asking me whether I want to take her, what offer her a job or something, you know. But I just encourage her. She said to me, she said, "Oh, you know, apparently the owner of this car wash is wanting to sell the business." I said, "Really?" You know. I said, "Then we just begin to talk." And I said, "Okay." I said, "I know her too. I know the lady who owns the car wash." And I said to this this worker, "I said, I'll pray for her. I'll pray for her." that the Lord will send a buyer. She said, that would be great. She said to me, she said, I will ring my boss now to tell her you're praying for her. I said, yeah, fantastic, do that. But the thing is, he said, we begin to understand that God wants us to be blessed. Everybody say amen. To grow from glory to glory, strength to strength. And those of you, uh, they were not uh, in the live group last Wednesday. Uh, I'm telling you, something happened this week. I just got another contract. Hallelujah. And I just thought to God, I said, God, in the midst of everything that is going on, you are just opening up this well of blessing. That as I believe you, what happened, I begin to see the faith and the reward of who and what I believe. Hallelujah. One of the clients that was with a aged care, she wasn't very happy with this particular aged care. So she decided to change and gone to another aged care. So, but she has wanted and wants us, uh, wants, uh, uh, you know, the, 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 uh, the service that we provide to continue to serve her. So she said, I don't want any other um, a gardener or provider to service me. I want Ray to come or Ray's business to come. So as a result, what happened then, this new aged care got a hold of me and said, your client that you were serving before has really wanted you to continue. So now we are going to ask you to provide the service. And this new aged care company is called Guardian Angel. Hallelujah. <laughs> I just thought, Lord of all the age cares, I've got, I'm going into the Christian age care now, hallelujah. Guardian angel, age care, hallelujah. I said, oh Lord, you're going to send some more angels down my way. 
You're going to send some more blessings. But it's, it's just that what God is doing and He's continued to give and continue to provide in a way that, like I say to God, God, only you can orchestrate something like that. But it's the faith. What about Thomas Aquinas, a famous author? He says this, to one who has faith, no explanation is necessary. To one without faith, no explanation is possible. When you have the faith and to believe from faith to faith, glory to glory, strength to strength, okay, what happened? You don't need any explanation. Because you know the Bible says whom you believe and you are persuaded that he is able. Hallelujah. Because he who began a good work in you is faithful to complete, to finish the job. And God wants you and I understand this month, our theme from faith to faith, glory to glory. Because I want to bring you some teaching, very important teaching. You see, really, this is the reality. Most of you would agree there is too much negativity going around our world today. Okay? There is. You know, there is a lot of stuff that people don't understand, people are confused about, and you, you, you read it and you hear it all the time, everywhere. We need to shift our focus by faith. I don't know about you, I think if you're in a situation where maybe you have been focusing on things that God doesn't want you to focus. Sometimes, Certain things happen to certain people that they did not expect that to happen. And maybe they are distressed or maybe they are upset about something. And sometimes what happens, we begin to focus our mind on those things and people will be asking this question, why did it happen to me? Okay? Let's be honest, yeah? Why did it happen to me? I know I've done... Good, or I've been a good person, or I have got a good heart, or I've, or maybe I have served the Lord, I've given my time, or I've given my resource. Why did something like this happen to me? Okay, so from a negative perspective, our focus then begin to focus on those things instead of focusing on what God wants us to focus. That's why I'm, I'm really want to explain and I want to challenge us today, even as I prepare, as I challenge myself, shift my focus, okay? God wants me to grow from glory to glory, strength to strength, blessing upon blessing upon blessing. We are confronted with things every day that affects each and every one of us things that matter to us. Everyone here, there are certain things that you've been focusing on, that you've been thinking about, that you've been dwelling on that matters to you. What is it that matters to you? Some people could be relationships that matters. Some others, finances that matters because we think about it a lot. Some people, your job, obviously your career, maybe your studies and your future. So things that you dwell on a lot. Things that matter to you. Philippians 1.18, let me start from here. If you can recall, I think it was the previous month, that I was talking about Paul, the Apostle. Let us continue a little bit this afternoon with Paul. In verse 18, he says this, but what does it matter? The important thing is that in every way, whether from false motives or true, Christ is preached. 
And because of this, I rejoice. Yes, and I will continue to rejoice. You see, with Paul, he says, what does it matter? Which is a powerful thing to think about it. He's at the moment, as he wrote this epistle, he's actually in prison. Okay? He's in prison. He's got chains and he's got shackles all over him. He's in prison. And what matters to Paul is that Christ is preached. Christ's name is made known everywhere. And this afternoon, ask yourself, what matters to you? What matters to you? Your career, your family, your children, your work, your finance, your relationships, all those things that we give time to and focus and attention, which is not wrong, don't get me wrong, yeah? But what is it at the end of the day that really matters to you? Let me tell you what matters to me. What matters to me is Christ is to be preached. Hallelujah. What matters to me is that Christ's name be lifted up and be glorified. What matters to me, I say, God, you're blessing me in incredible ways. You're blessing me more than what I have ever asked for. I say, God, what is the purpose of your blessing? The purpose is so that Christ is preached. Hallelujah. The purpose is that Christ will be lifted up. Purpose is Christ will be glorified. Oh God, in Jesus' name. That even as you have released the provision, you have released the blessing, God, that I will not be one that will withhold, but rather I'll be one that would release. Hallelujah. Because you heard me say before, the more you hold back, the Bible says it can lead to poverty. But the more you release, the more you give. Guess what happened? God does keep pouring in. Because as long as the bottle, can I just use that for example? As long as this bottle is full, you cannot fill it anymore. But the moment it's emptied, then it just keeps filling, 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 filling. Overflow, overflow. But what matters to you this afternoon? Have a think about that. It's a very, very important question. Because why? What matters to you will determine the direction you point your life in. Paul says, what does it matter? So what matters to you is where you will determine the direction that you're going to point your life. Because everything that you're going to do, everything that you're going to focus on, because you're going to focus on what matters to you. If it's, like I said, if it's, uh, you know, for some people, if it's relationship, they will focus so much time, effort and everything on that relationship whether it be that relationship is going well or whether it's struggling or whether it's, you know, is it going somewhere? So they spend a lot of time on that relationship. Or if it is finance, people will spend so much time ensuring that they have, you know, maybe good investments or they save for the future, this and that. So everything, what matters to the person will then determine your direction. How and where you would end up in five years' time, maybe in 10 years' time, maybe in 15 years' time, where would you end up? What would you be doing? How would your family be growing up? What sort of environment? So what is it that matters to you? Have a think this afternoon. We spend enough time, listen carefully, talking about cases. <laughs> Variant. And vaccination. Everybody say, yeah. There is, man, honestly. Okay, I'm not being negative. I thank the Lord that there are some uh, wonderful reports and wonderful, you know, steps that have been taken. Because every day you hear, you hear, you hear every day. 
I tell you, every day, nonstop. I mean, I'm meant to fly to Brisbane next Sunday and I'm thinking, I don't think I'll be able to go. <laughs> because at the moment, Brisbane is still considered a hotspot, yeah? Apparently, they're easing the restrictions tonight, 6 p.m. But in what areas, I don't know. Until after 6 p.m., then I would know. I said to Math, Math, just be prepared, okay? If I were to go up, if it's an orange zone, I can still go there because Victoria is green, but it's when I come back into Victoria, then I might have to go 14 days isolation. That would be not possible for me. <laughs> See? So I said to him, ask me all these things, you know, how all this stuff that's going on, cases. But praise the Lord, man. I say, if you read the news, praise God, we are making progress. Everybody say, Amen. Praise the Lord, you know. And uh, I think uh, as we look at Singapore, what Singapore is doing, uh, this is what they say. The Singapore government say we are not going to be looking at cases or referring to cases anymore. Da da da. They made some plans moving forward, and which. Thank the Lord, our Prime Minister Scott Morrison has put uh, 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 a plan together. Okay? It's like the new normal. Okay? After COVID, what we're going to do? <laughs> Hallelujah. There's four stages apparently, yeah? Four phases and stuff like that. So thank the Lord there uh, is some steps moving forward. But I think what we need to do, we need to shift our focus. Everybody say, shift your focus. Shift your focus. Shift your focus. Paul gave us an incredible lesson on how to shift our focus from the realization of everything that is going on to what I call anticipation. Just like what has been proposed now for the new normal for our, by our Prime Minister, who is obviously having discussion with the National Cabinet and the Premiers of all the states and the proposal of the different phases that we are going to go into and that will help us to live with the virus. It's going to hang around. It's going to hang around for a long time, yeah? Okay? And... But there are progress and there are plans. But I want you to, can you, if you can, just turn with me to your Bible, where do you have it on, um, you know, your phone. And I want you to read together with me or just follow me as I read, reading from verses 18 to 27. From 18 to 27, I want you to pick up something, something very important that Paul has written in this epistle. Now, just remember what the word I'm trying to focus on now is that realization of where Paul was. He was in prison, bound up in chains, but yet is an incredible lesson that Paul is showing us from realization to anticipation of what God can do. It's shifting, you see that? It's shifting our focus and let our faith begin to grow and multiply from faith to faith, from one dimension to another dimension. Have you got it? Ready? If you've got it, what I want you to do reading from verse 18 to verse 27. As we read, I want you to take note of one particular word that Paul was using in these verses. So 18 to 27 is about 9, 10 verses there, okay? In these 10 verses, there's one thing Paul, or one particular word Paul was using to show us what anticipation is. Shifting your focus. Ready? What does it matter? Verse 18. The important thing is that in every way, whether from false motives or true, Christ is preached. And because of this, I rejoice 
And I, everybody say, will. I will. Lindsay, can you please take a note of me, for me? How many will in these 10 verses? You ready? Okay. Listen carefully. He didn't say that I think. He didn't say I may. He didn't say um, probably. No. Okay. Now this is anticipation. He realized, okay, the situation that he's in, which we all realize the situation that we are in, okay, no matter what your situation is, no matter what the situation of the, of the country, of the state, of the world is, we all know, okay, but personally in our lives, there may be certain situation that we are going through. The realization can be painful, can be long, can be stretching, can be deep, can be whatever. But Paul is teaching us something. And I want you to learn something this afternoon. Ready? So remember, he says, Yes, and I will continue to rejoice. For I know that through your prayers and God's provision of the Spirit of Jesus Christ that has happened to me will turn out for my deliverance. I eagerly expect and hope that I will in no way be ashamed and will have sufficient courage so that now, as always, Christ will be exalted in my body, whether by life or by death. For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. If I'm going on, if I am to go on living in the body, this will mean fruitful labor for me. Yet, what shall I choose? I do not know. I'm torn between the two. I desire to depart and be with Christ, which is better by far. How many of you agree? Okay. But it is more necessary for you that I remain in the body. Think about that for a moment. This guy is in prison. But yet, he's not actually thinking about himself. He's thinking for the people. He's thinking that, hey, it's far better that I actually go and be with Jesus. You know what I mean? I'm created for him. But yet, I'm torn, he said. It's better that I be here for you to remain in the body. Verse 25, convinced of this, I know that I will remain and I will continue with all of you for your progress and joy in the faith. Oh man, I love it. See that? It's for the people. It says, I will remain so that, why? So that I will continue for your progress, for your joy in the faith, so that through my being with you, again, your boasting in Christ Jesus will abound on account of me. Verse 27. Whatever happens, conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. Whether I come, and see you or only hear about you in my absence, I will know that you stand firm in one spirit, striving together as one for the faith of the gospel. Hallelujah. How many? Ten. Ten wills. I um, don't know about you, when you read that passage, is it anticipation? Is it anticipation? Where well, he says to you, I will be with you. For the gospel of Jesus Christ, I will. It's incredible. This is Paul. Our life, sometimes, if you realize this, if you don't realize, I hope you do today, our life is meant to be for somebody else's progress or progress or progression 
rather than our own. Because many times, this is the honest truth. Honest truth. A lot of times people do care for themselves more than others. This is just human nature. But this is Paul who is teaching us today in this passage an incredible lesson. The realization, like I said, of where he is at in prison, bound in chains, shackles. But yet he's thinking of other people. He's thinking of the church in Philippi. You know that because really, without Paul being there, the church wouldn't have been birthed. He says, for me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. Verses 18 to 27, 10 verses with 10 will. Hallelujah. I'm pleased that your guys counted correctly. Eh? I was thinking, oh, I hope they got a 10. You did. 10 verses with 10 will. It's astonishing. When I read that, I just thought, Lord, this is incredible. This is incredible. Verse 20, shifting our focus on expectation and anticipation by faith. Paul says, <clears throat> I eagerly expect and hope. I want you to take note of these three little words there. I eagerly expect and hope. You see that? There is an expectation, there is an anticipation, and there is a hope. Okay? that he is no longer dwelling on just his current uh, circumstances or the current situation that he is in. He is saying to you and I today to really consider shifting our focus, to really consider looking beyond the current circumstances, maybe looking beyond the hurts, Maybe looking beyond the disappointments. Maybe looking beyond the lack. Looking beyond the things that have affected us or the things that matters to us. What matters to Paul is the crisis bridge. Even in chains. Even in prison. Even as he was there. I want you to take a note of these three Important words, eagerly, expect, and hope. Three words to describe Paul's mentality when confronted with opposition. Like I said, he's in prison, yeah? He's gone through shipwrecks, bitten by snakes, accused, you know, sent to prison so many times. But yet, Paul, in his incredible wisdom and knowledge, don't forget Paul is a very learned man, okay? He's learned through, you know, a lot of the great uh, teachers of the law. There's a Greek word, koepo kara dokia. Everybody say, Epo, Kara, Dokia. Okay? These three words are very important in Greek. If you were to do any Greek studies, as I was um, looking into this and just did a bit of research on Greek, I mean, I hope that I actually studied Greek. <laughs> but it's one of those hard ones to study. Okay? Because when you are obviously, you know, um, not accustomed to that sort of, uh, uh, um, you know, language or whatever. It's, it's hard because they've got so many sort of writings and, and, and little, you know, strokes here and there. But when Paul told the church in Philippi that I eagerly expect 
and hope. So what Paul is saying in Greek, he's saying, Apo, kara, dokio. What does Apo mean in Greek? Apo, a prefix that means to turn away with concentration, ignoring other interest. This is Apo in Greek. This is Paul, incredible, isn't it? As he is in prison, he's in chains, and he's saying, Apo. That means I'm going to turn away from the situation I'm in with concentration and ignoring other interests. I'm telling you, when you're in prison, he's turning to his right. Guess who he saw? Prisoners. When he turns to his left, guess what he saw? Prisoners. As he looked into his right hand, guess what he saw? Chains. And as he looked into his left hand, what did he see? Chains. As he looked down, what did he see? Chains. He's all chained up. But yet, he's saying, April, hallelujah. He's saying, April, I want to shift my concentration and I'm going to ignore all the other bits and pieces that is happening around me. Same challenge. Think about it today. All the stuff that is going on in your life, you know what is going on. <laughs> you know, you know. If there's anything that you are maybe struggling with, you're saying, oh God, you know, I've been waiting for you to do this or would you to do, to do that. I'm just, you know, I'm getting a bit, Lord, you know, impatient or Lord God, when is it going to happen? You see, these are the things that matters to you. So you're thinking about it. But yet, if you learn from Paul today, an incredible lesson. April. April. Everybody say April. I'm telling you, when you leave this place today, you're going to be learning April. You're going to learn this incredible three words from the Greek language, April. What's the next word? What's the next word? Anybody can remember? What is it? Kara. April. Kara. What does kara mean? Kara means head. Literally, it means head. Okay? In Greek. So what Paul is saying, I am going to literally turn my head. I'm going to shift my focus. If I'm keeping my head on the left-hand side, looking at all, all these chains, looking at all these prisoners that is around me, looking at the place that I'm sitting in or I'm, I'm living, saying it's filthy. I mean, back in those days, imagine what the prison is like. Imagine what it's like. Nowadays, we think that prisons are, nowadays our prison is cool. <laughs> Some people, some people just said, oh, just let me stay in prison, maybe. You know, free food and free curry, <laughs> whatever that may come. But obviously there's not much life in there, but some people have had those experiences. But imagine what it was like back in those days. But yet Paul says, I am turning my head, my head, my focus. I'm going to shift it. With concentration. So where do you concentrate most of the time? Where do you concentrate? Here. Correct? When you look at something, your concentration is here. Your concentration is here. Your hate determines where you're going to move, where you're going to focus. You know, if I'm looking at Neha now, my concentration and my focus is here. I'm not focusing on you with my right hand or my right left hand, but with my head. Everybody say kara. What's the next word? What's the next word? Dokia. Remember? Eagerly expect hope. Dokia. What does dokia mean? Dokia means to stretch forward. 
In Greek, dokia means to stretch for. So Paul is saying and teaching us today, what I'm going to do when I shift my focus is this. I'm going to concentrate to ignore all the other interests around me and I'm going to use my head and I'm going to stretch forward. Not backwards, not sideward, but I'm using my head to stretch forward. No wonder Paul, in his incredible writings, he always says this, let us, what, put the past behind and look toward the goal of reaching. Okay? The goal set before us. He's always stretching forward. He's always thinking about forward. He's always have this mindset of anticipation. He says, I will continue to rejoice. Yes, it's tough. I'm in prison. I'm in chains. I will rejoice. And he says, yes, and again, I will rejoice. Hallelujah. The word in the Greek is apokaradokia, which means literally translating to the word for head, which is kara, dokia, which is best described as stretching forward, apokaradokia, in literal translation means stretching the head forward. That's what it is. Everybody try and stretch your head forward. Stretch your head forward. That means, oh God, I'm not going to look to the past. I'm not going to look at what happened to me last year. I'm not going to look at what happened to me years before. I'm not going to look at the things or the whatever, you know, uh, uh, troubled or of relationships or, or illness or, or lack of provision and all these things or even mistakes that I've made along life's journey, you know, some decisions that you and I have made that have caused us to be in deep, let me use a good word, yogurt. <laughs> these are the things that happens to us through life's journey. Things that we give our time to, our attention to, things that we thought really matters. But does it really matter? Think about it one more time. Things that we thought matters, but does it really matter? And Paul is saying, Apokara Dokia. Apokara Dokia which literally means stretching the head forward. No matter what our situation is today, we are stretching our head forward, away from our past toward our future. Can we all say amen? No matter what our situation is, no matter where we came from, no matter what has happened, you see, you have a choice, I have a choice. I can still stay in my past. I can still stay in my past and still be upset, still be angry, still be disappointed, still be, you know, thinking, why on earth did my dad do that to me? Oh, my Lord. Why did that thing happen? You know, we all can. We all can stay in that. But if you today want to receive from faith to faith, Glory to glory, strength to strength, believing God for one blessing another, believing God for additional, progressive, moving forward, anticipation, will, I will bless the Lord at all times. I will glorify His name. Ten will in 10 verses. That's powerful. Your faith needs a bit of stretching. Your faith, my faith, needs a bit of stretching. Like I said, from faith to faith. In order for your faith to grow, you need a bit of stretching. 
How many of you know to be fit, you need to be stretched? You know, I think, uh, I mean, Fabian knows that and Saturday night, badminton, I... <laughs> Whenever I go and play badminton, man, Jenny will say to me, make sure you stretch. I go there. <laughs> A little bit of stretching. You know? You, know why? you know why you have to stretch, isn't it? Because in order to be fit, you have to stretch. How many of you have watched, you know, people who play soccer and obviously in Victoria, AFL and all that. These guys, you know how a lot of times you hear these wonderful players, you know, they have, they torn their hamstring. Okay. Why? Because they haven't really stretched. Correct? Because we don't really, I don't know about you, but I'm really bad in stretching. You know, I can't touch. If I go like that straight, I cannot touch the ground with the tip of my finger. I think maybe I'm getting older. <laughs> maybe I was, I was able to do it when I was younger. But when you do that stretching, guess what is it's pulling here? It's your hamstring. You know, that really hard in your back. You know, this is all I can do. How many of you can touch the floor? Oh, awesome. You see, you're more flexible. You definitely are. Okay. But to be fit, you need to Stretch. You need to be stretched. And your faith and my faith needs a bit of stretching. To be enlarged and to extend, you hear me say this, okay? In the start of this year, okay? To enlarge the tent of our, our territory, to stretch forth beyond that has got to do with your faith. Where are you being stretched? No matter what lies in front of me, Paul's, I'm going ahead. I'm heading in the right direction. Take note of the word. I am. I am what? Heading. I am going forward. I am. Apokaradokia. I am heading, heading in the right direction. I am moving forward. I'm not looking at the past. That's why Philippians say so incredibly, leave the past behind. But stretch forth, looking forward to the gold in Christ Jesus that I might finish the race, that I might run this race with what? Perseverance. I'm in it for the long haul. This is not a hundred meter dash. But I am still looking forward to the gold of, that God has set before me, heavenward in Christ Jesus. But whenever anyone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now, the Lord is the Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Another word, there is liberty. And we all with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory are being transformed into his image with everybody read this together with, with what? Ever increasing glory which comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. But whenever anyone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. What does the veil do? Where does the veil sit? On your head. Whenever anyone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Whatever that is covering your head or your focus from going forward is now taken away. That why? You may know that the Lord is the Spirit and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. That's why I say this to many, many people. Our lives are not meant to be living in bondage. The enemy wants you to be 
captive, held captive in bondage. But that's not God's plan. God's plan is that you will be what? Free, hallelujah. That you will have the liberty because all who with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory and as we see Him, we are being transformed into His image with ever increasing glory. Hallelujah. From glory to glory, from faith to faith, from strength to strength, which comes from the Spirit of the Lord. Oh, dear Jesus, hallelujah. I get excited when I preach a message like that. Because you know why? God doesn't want us to go backwards. He doesn't want us to focus on the past, on the focus on what might have been. But rather he says to us, will you learn anticipation? Will you eagerly expect, eagerly expect hope? Will you apokaradokia? Will you concentrate, ignoring all other interests around you? Will you then kara, which means head? Will you then dokia, which means looking forward, stepping forward? Will you apokara dokia? Will you ignore everything and just keep moving toward the destiny I have for you so that I can then begin to lead you from glory to glory, strength to strength, that the veil will be removed that stop you from seeing the Lord's glory, that you will be transformed more and more into His image with ever-increasing glory. So when others look at your life and my life, they'll be able to say, Lindsay, man, man, your life has changed, my friend. Lindsay, you're not the same Lindsay that we used to know. Yeah, mm, you know, maybe the white beard has grown, you know, but there's something different about you. Thank you, Lindsay, for thinking of me and praying for me. Thank you, Lindsay. There is something interesting, this lady, when she said, the Lord Jesus, <laughs> today. And then she looked at me and she said, you must be a Christian. I said, yes, I am. Hallelujah. What is it that you see in me? An increase in glory. Hallelujah. An increase in glory. Praise God. So whenever I go to the car wash now, I see her. I say, hey man, glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Why don't you close your eyes as we finish? Thank you, Lord. You're faithful. Thank you, Jesus. The song that we did, I think, Fabian, something about the victory. You know, the Lord's victory. The victory is the Lord. That we we turn our head, we turn our focus, we shift our focus today. Oh, my prayer, my prayer really is for all of us. You can learn to shift your focus. If you leave today, just remember these three words. And these all three words joined together, Apokaradokia. that I will shift my focus, ignoring all other interests with concentration, apu, kara, which means head, dokia, that means stepping forward. Lord, I'm going to turn away with concentration all other interests, things that I thought really matters to me. But today, Lord, I thank you that you're going to show me what really, really matters at the end of the day. That my life here on earth is actually for the benefit of someone else. Paul says, what does it matter? 
but a crisis bridge. I will rejoice. Yes, I will rejoice. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you this afternoon. Why don't you stand with me? Everybody, let's stand together. Let's stand together. Jesus, we look to you today. Hallelujah. The author and finisher of our faith. Lord, we pray this month as we embrace from faith to faith, learning to overcome the struggles of life. We thank you, Lord, the victory you have provided for us. It is your victory. Hallelujah. It is your victory. Thank you, God. Oh, shalalala, my dad.